This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Come check us out at C2E2 August 5th through 7th. Hope to see you there. Welcome, Soul. Welcome to Disney's Oscar Collection. Thank you, Inside Out. It's even bigger than I imagined. Well, that's what you get when you're constantly pushing the boundary of excellence. Oh my god, is that Frozen? It certainly is. Welcome to the collection. And just next to her is Toy Story 3. Holy smokes, you were nominated for Best Picture 2, weren't you? I certainly was. Oh man, there's the first Oscar for any animated picture, Snow White! <laughs> Kill me! <laughs> Wow, I can't believe I'm in the presence of such greatness. Believe it. Every film here was the best animated feature of its year. That's right, from Coco to Zootopia to Finding Nemo. Oh, what an honor. Ahem. Oh, yes, and then there's Brave. That's right. I won ten years ago. Wait, Brave won for best animated feature? Yeah, she's a little like Suicide Squad. Everyone always forgets they won an Oscar. Except when someone wants to point out the Oscars don't know what they're talking about. Excuse me, I was clearly the best animated film that year. Oh, I guess if it was a slow year. I beat out lizards like Paranorman. Holy shit, she beat out Paranorman? That forgettable Wreck-It Ralph Fleck. Dude, there was another Disney film that could beat her? Two, actually. That's right. The Tim Burton movie, Frank and Weenie. Yeah, I'm shocked you beat that too. Now, here we all are, in the home of the brave. Huh, that's, huh. Look, nobody talks about her. The more you forget she's here, the more you forget she's here. Did you know, halfway through production, they switched out directors? You never would have known. It flowed so naturally. Yes, a Scottish Grimm's fairy tale. They go hand in hand. Oh, come on now. She's not that bad. We know. It's just she isn't that good either. Okay, maybe she's not Oscar worthy. Maybe she's not the best animated film. Maybe the Oscar voters clearly just saw the trailer and not the film itself. Can you get to the however part? However, there are firsts that this movie did that should be given attention to. Ah, so you think I'm as good as the movie Up? When did I say that? You didn't not say it. How do I get out of this? Playoff music! And, and I want to give a big thank you to my agent and God, and, and thank you! Thank you! Thank you all! Ugh, they never give us enough time! It's been ten years since the release of Pixar's Brave, and if you didn't know that, nobody would blame you. Brave is one of those almost forgotten Pixar films in that if you bring it up, people do remember seeing it, but rarely remember if it was any good, or more commonly, if it was a Pixar production or a Disney production. It certainly doesn't look, feel, or act like any other Pixar movie, but it sure does look, feel, and act a whole bunch like a lot of Disney movies. At the time though, there was a lot of buildup for this flick. The trailers were shrouded in mystery as we saw a Scottish princess traveling through the woods with a bow and arrow looking for spirits. It almost had a Miyazaki feel and got a lot of people excited for something different from the usual objects coming to life movies. It promised something mysterious and epic and gave us a lot of what we've already seen from Disney already. It still made money, and I don't know anyone who loathes this movie, but the response by many seems to range from underwhelming to forgetful. However, there surprisingly are a lot of firsts this movie accomplished, and, dare I say it, was ahead of its time in a few areas. Just not the areas you were probably hoping for in a film like this. There's quite a bit to talk about, so let's not waste any time. Let's take a look at one of Pixar's I didn't hate it collection, Brave. 
So I'll be honest, I totally Mandela affected this movie because I remember it opening up with the main character's narration. Some see our destiny is tied to the land, as much a part of us as we are of it. But it turns out there's an extra intro showing her as a child and her father battling a bear. Why'd I forget? Because it's totally pointless! There's nothing here that isn't discovered later, aside from baby brave dolls selling like hotcakes because of this, and bears in Scotland are really good at sneaking up on people. <laughs> How'd that thing get there without being noticed? Look at the space between him and the forest! Was he like, oh yes, lovely day for a walk, I was a bear the whole time! Ah! Even the placement of the title seems a little random. Come on, you! Of course, because the film is about him, and the bear, and no it's not! Like I said, the film wants to try the intro again, so we get an opening narration from Merida, played by Kelly MacDonald, who tells us how her father lost his leg to a bear. So again, makes that intro kinda pointless. Like I said before though, there are a lot of firsts in this film. This is the first time Pixar actually changed engines to take on more detail, and comparing these landscapes to the ones before, you can tell. It's also the first Pixar movie to have a female protagonist, and even the first one to have a female director. On that note, I think Disney said, okay, if we're gonna do that, we're making her a princess, because by haggis, we're not straying that far. And I can't be the first one to say this, but Merida's design is friggin' phenomenal. No Disney lead before or after has looked like her. Where most Disney women have very similar looks, even if they don't at first, they will eventually. Merida really stands out. Those sharp but tiny eyes, those piercing turquoise irises, that wild fiery hair that has a life of its own. If you were to show me the Disney princesses lined up, I'd say they all look nice, but what's her story? She's totally different. The downside though is, she's not different. Tell me if you've heard this one. Merida doesn't like being a princess. She hates being told what to do and often escapes her authoritative trappings to partake in her free spirit song quota most princess movies have. It's funny that so many of these women are so bent on not being the typical princess that they ironically become the typical princess. But okay, here's a biggie I noticed. Merida has a lot of run-ins with her mother, Eleanor, played by Emma Thompson. Nowadays, mother-daughter confrontation productions are everywhere. They're practically the new hot subject. But back then, there weren't that many. And it's not like an evil mother or anything like that. It's just a mother-daughter working out their differences. And at the time, I thought it was unique. There was a big budget anime film with that at the center. It's big bucks now, but back then, it was kind of new territory. Merida, mom, just remember to smile. What's not new territory? Her being forced to marry someone she doesn't love or even know. The lords are presenting their sons <gasps> the clans have accepted! Uh, is that in the Scottish sense or is this about to be a Spike Lee joint? She obviously doesn't want to marry and one of the things you might pick up quickly on is the voice acting in this is pretty good. Even I had reservations when I faced betrothal. Yeah. But we can't just run away from who we are. I don't want my life to be over. There's a lot of great talent in this, like Billy Connolly, Robbie Coltrane, and Craig Ferguson. Great comedic talents that sadly aren't allowed to be that funny in this. Unless you count Screaming Vowels funny. Our alliance is over! We decide which one of our sons you have done! I your sons are fit to marry my daughter! Which if you watch my show, you probably do. We're given a brief, but pretty cool backstory about four princes who were given land to share, but one decided to take it all for himself. The oldest prince wanted to rule the land for himself. He followed his own path. His name was Prince Beror, son of forced shadowing. The story is to teach Merida not to be selfish, but funny enough, an extra feature on the Blu-ray called The Legend of Mordu actually gives more the epic story I think people were looking for with this film. But heck with that, we gotta get Merida corseted up! Which I don't think corsets were in Scotland at the time. Nope, but do oh, adventure films love it as a symbol of oppression! <laughs> the three clans show up with their kings all offering their sons to take Merida's hand. Once in a while the humor can be pretty good. Like, I love how one of the kings is named MacGuffin. Also, this got a good laugh out of me. My only son with one arm. He was... He was steering the ship. This is not only a good punchline, but for a few seconds, I love wondering why he has four legs. But we haven't had any zany slapstick yet, so... Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> oh, 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 
Yeah, I touched on this a little earlier, but the humor in this Pixar movie weirdly isn't that great. Granted, it's not annoying, but it's not funny either. Like I said, once in a while you'll get a cute joke like Eleanor pulling all these giant men's ears, but mainly it's Feast Jedi! Ah! Ah! Yeah! I can play that clip again, but the princes all take part in an archery contest to win Merida. But here comes a new challenger. I love how she keeps her face hidden like nobody can figure out who it is. Good break. It's you. I'll be shooting for my own hand. <gasps> she pulls a Robin Hood because again, this film thinks we've never seen any other Disney flicks before, and her mother finally has had enough. Me. I followed the you rules. You don't know what you've done. It will be fire I... and sword if it's not set right. Listen! I am the queen. As much as I respect they're doing a mother-daughter story at a time when that really wasn't much of a thing, I didn't really find myself getting that invested, and maybe you can see why. This whole marriage is what you want. Do you ever bother to ask what I want? You're acting like a child. And you're a beast! Yeah, it feels like placeholder dialogue, doesn't it? These aren't terrible lines, but absolutely nothing about them stands out. It's like they said, well, obviously we're gonna write something punchier later, and then never got to it. I spend less time listening to what they're actually saying and do the dumb American thing of repeating what part of their accent sound funny to me. Walk around telling me what to do, what not to do. <laughs> do you? Trying to make me be like you. <laughs> you! Sorry, this is so much more fun! Merida slashes the tapestry with all of her symbolism and goes riding into the forest where sprites, said to lead you to your destiny, await. Okay, so at this point, the movie isn't bad, but you are waiting for the actual meat of the film to kick in. But as mentioned before, the focus is more on Hans Christian Andersen slash Grimm's fairy tales rather than Scottish tales. In fact, they apparently picked the 10th century because Scotland still had a few bears then. Which makes you wonder why the hell they even set this in Scotland to begin with. And you definitely feel that Grimm's fairy tale touch when she discovers a witch that, yeah, again, feels more like a Baba Yaga mascot for a Russian grocery store than a Scottish witch. Witch! Woodcarver! The wisps lend me! Woodcarver! You'll change my feet! Woodcarver! You see, too many unsatisfied customers. This is also where you're like, oh yeah, Pixar movie. In this whole scene you can see out of something like Pixar's Witches, it doesn't quite match the rest of the film's tone. The last time I did this was for a prince. Easy on the eyes. Pants. The lamp! The witch says she can help change her mother's mind by giving her a magic pastry. Merida does it, makes her mother incredibly ill, yet the whole time it looks like she's dying, she keeps asking if she still has to marry. My head's spinning like a top. How do you feel about the marriage now? You might have something new to say on the marriage. Hey. I'll just tell them the wedding's off then. So anyway, as I was saying, get the marriage not all that bad. Eleanor makes weird sounds, starts to transform, and... So yeah, I think we can start our count of, oh, we're doing this. ELBC a rare case of the rare and exceptionally rare DoorDash fish. One looks at these fish and says, Summer is in full swing, and the celebration begins during the summer of Dash Pass by DoorDash. With weekly members only offers and new items released every week, you can shine bright and feel cool all season long. Ah, here is another rare specimen of the French accent mimicking voice that a lot of people probably don't recognize because they are too young, but still kind of get reference because of Sponge. It reminds me of DoorDash. Say hello to summer savings during the summer of Dash Pass from DoorDash. With zero dollar delivery fees, exclusive items, and more than 25,000 members only offers nationwide, Dash Pass by DoorDash has everything you need to make your summer more memorable. Ah, uh, here is a rare case of I want to talk about DoorDash more. With your Dash Pass by DoorDash membership, you can save an average of four to five dollars on every order you place for delivery or pickup. That means 
means on average Dash Pass pays for itself when you order just twice a month. With members only offers and items dropping every week, you'll have everything you need to make the most out of this summer right at your fingertips. He is another beautiful creature. It looks so alive, but it is a screen saver. There is another screen saver I like even more though you guessed it, DoorDash. Wee wee, sign bright during DoorDash's summer of Dash Pass and get 50% off your first order, up to $15 value. Use promo code Nostalgia at checkout when you spend $12 or more. That's 50% off your first order, up to $15 value when you sign up for DoorDash during summer of Dash Pass using the promo code Nostalgia. Do do not forget Flynn, that is code Nostalgia for 50% off your first order, up to $15 value. This is the unusual sighting of nearly tear holding cat. It reminds me of Chime. Is the piece of plastic in your wallet doing enough for you? Because with secure Chime credit card builder, Visa card, credit card, you can start building credit with everyday purchases and on-time payments. You see, with credit builder, members can increase their credit history with no annual fees or interest. And having a good credit score means getting better car loan rates or renting apartments easier or just blacking lights around the dinner table. Ah, he leads the unusual of unusual this shark against clean clean. You can put them anywhere Loki is in space or against a coffee cup. My imagination is boring. What is not boring? Chime. So continue your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. If the accent I start always goes to make on for some reason. Kind of. I don't know. My accent has traveled the world. Get started at Chime.com slash Nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash Nostalgia. Ho 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 ho. Here is the incredible phenomenon of guy talking very fast. Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stripe Bank NA. Pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the your Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact score may vary, and some user scores may not improve. And this is the goodbye. Goodbye. Apologies to all French and Jamaicans out there. So we're about halfway through the story, and the mystery is finally revealed of what kind of movie this is. Mother Bear. That's right, a Disney film that made them no money, but for some reason they wanted to try again in Scotland. I don't know, was anyone excited when they found out this is where they were going with all this? Is this at all what you thought the story might be from the trailers? It's funny because the original title was The Bow and the Bear, and while that would have been more honest advertising, would you be excited to see that? The, to the film's credit, not only does the bear not talk in this, but the animation on her is really great. <laughs> Maybe I have a soft spot for characters who can't talk because they have to communicate through more creative ways. But the expressions on her face are incredibly well done. I always know what she's thinking and what she's trying to get across, and her reactions are some of the few genuine laughs in the movie. Which is good, because once everybody discovers there's a bear in the castle, everyone chases after her in, again, a pretty boring bit of slapstick. Marty! I almost decapitated another me, but this time I had a good reason! Merida tells her three little brothers to distract them, and again, this is Pixar, some of the best comedy and animation. Are you getting any laughs out of this? And, like I mentioned before... Right! But Merida and Eleanor make it back to the witch, but her cabin is abandoned, and... Again, in a total tone change, the witch has a cauldron answering machine. If you'd like to inquire about portraits, pour vial one into the cauldron. If you'd like the menu in garlic, vial two. Now, once more to the film's credit, even though this joke doesn't fit here, I feel like this is a kind of humor you see more in Disney fantasy films. I guess you could argue it kind of started with Tangled, but something about this joke in particular I can see much more in a Frozen or an Onward movie. A self-aware reference to modern day that doesn't quite break the fourth wall. Again, for all this movie's issues, there are quite a few nuggets that gave way to some real Disney gold in the future. Thankfully, bears survive magic explosions. I think they know the audience doesn't care enough to question it anymore. And Merida tries to think about what to do while remembering how loving her mother truly was. I'm here. I'll always be right here. 
unless I become a bear, in which case I'll never forgive you. What's ya. specific? Well, I'm specific. As Merida shows Eleanor the advantages of roughing it, Eleanor maybe learns the lesson too well as she starts to take on the mind of a bear without any control. Mom. <laughs> this is the one element of the plot that's legit really interesting. It gives a time limit not only to saving her mother, but maybe herself as we see a bear naturally would want to tear her to ribbons. But oh no, the sprites show the incredibly long way to go- Oh, that was fast. As they discover the chamber where the evil prince used to live and discover something similar happened when he was separated from his brothers. The spell... It's happened before. <laughs> yeah, I guess Scottish magic is very bear-based and not much variety in their spells. If Cinderella's fairy godmother was Scottish, she'd probably look like this. More do. <laughs> Not to harsh in the mood, but that's half of Merida's fighting right there. Like I said, all the advertising showing her ready for action, standing alone against the odds. She shoots two arrows that do nothing, and half her fight scenes are over. That's like advertising a young Steven Seagal movie and getting the action of an old Steven Seagal movie. It's a little misleading. Now part of that might be because in the climax, the mother and daughter switch roles, which I do kind of like. With the clans ready to go to war, Merida uses diplomacy instead of brute force to solve the situation. She's even coached by her mother, who's so moved by her actions that she tells her not to marry. And break tradition. <clears throat> he also loves Santinus. <laughs> It'd be great if she misinterpreted her signing, though. I want to declare war on the lot of you. Especially the kingdoms with small penises. Which is all of ya! I should also point out this is the first Disney princess movie where the princess doesn't get together with anyone, which again is something that would be adapted in future movies. <laughs> Strange thing to do, don't do that again. But the king gets the wrong idea when he sees the queen's room has been ripped apart. Eleanor! Yeah, he thinks the queen's been attacked by the bear, and they try to hunt her down. It's your wife, Eleanor! I'll not risk losing you too! I've gone through my arc of learning to listen to you, now I'm gonna go right back to not listening to you! We see her three brothers ate the pastry too, turning into bears. And if you're like me, you totally forgot they were even in the movie. So she has them chase after the maid who has the key. And man, how far the comedies come in this film. We've gone from butts to boobs! And number six, you may want to be on deck for this. <laughs> And if you're wondering why the story demanded them to be bears in this scene, even though it totally could have worked with them still as humans, well, because of a certain callback joke that begins with B and ends in odds. Speaking of forgetting things that were in the movie, oh yeah, the sculptures. Oh yeah, the Mardu bear. Oh yeah, the sprites. How can so little be happening in this movie, yet it leaves so little an impression I keep forgetting about it? So get ready, here's the other half of Merida's fighting. <laughs> Yeah, it's her dad, and it's about as short as the first one. Now again, this could tie into the fact that she gives in and goes diplomatic, while the mother gives in and goes ass-kicking on Mordu, who tries to kill everyone. But we've seen plenty of the mother being diplomatic, but not much of Merida kicking ass. Even when she's confronted by the bear. Look at this! Yeah, I don't think people would get excited if the advertising showed what her action scenes were really like. Come on! I'll take you with my bare hands! Ow! My bare hands were hurt by your bare hands! Like I said, Eleanor does fight him off, and even his spirit, I guess, is allowed to rest. It's so stoically brief, though, it kind of feels like Putty from Seinfeld signing off. I'm not the one going to hell. Sadly, though, it looks like too much time has passed, and Eleanor's mind has gone full bare. You've never given up on me. Oh, it's all good. Just do the Shaw of the Dead ending. Except instead of video games, you can play Caper Toss or something. No, because they mended their bond in time, she turns back to normal. Just don't ask what she sounds like. <laughs> don't say we didn't follow through with our running butts joke! Yeah, I'm sorry. What mended bond did the boys work on off screen to change back? 
Our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. Yeah, we had to spell out what the title meant because, again, the advertising sure didn't. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the original ending. What is it? What's wrong, sister? Oh! But to be fair, every movie would be better with that ending. And that was Brave. Still very underwhelming in many respects, but in several others, a little head of the game. Yes, Pixar didn't seem to take too much from this for their other films, but Disney sure did. It took a lot of the ideas it started and ran with them to make more fully fleshed out movies. And even with that said, the film isn't awful. It's not really even that bad. It's just not what I and I feel like a lot of other audiences were looking for. It's a flick I hear went through a lot of production issues, and it definitely shows, but there's been many more production hell movies that turned out a lot worse. While I can't think of anyone who quotes this film or recites its lessons, I can't think of anyone who really gets angry with it either. It's definitely not the best animated film that came out that year, but seeing how Prince of Egypt never got a directing Oscar and one of those directors also directed this, I guess you could say it balances out. Not a great film, not a terrible film, but surprisingly, an interesting film to discuss. See, I'm not all that bad. Eh, maybe we've been a little too hard on her. Yeah, now come on everybody, let's get excited to watch the next Oscars. <laughs> None of us actually watch it. You don't? No, it's the Oscars. Nobody wants to sit through that boar fest. But isn't Encanto coming out? That's sure to win. Yeah, but none of us are actually going to watch the ceremony. Eh, maybe you have a point. I mean, what's going to happen at the 2022 Oscars that's going to be worth You must have stories. I have stories. We're continuing cameos for charity, and all this month, we're donating to Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Living Beyond Breast Cancer is fulfilling its mission to provide trusted information and a community of support to those impacted by the disease. They offer in-person experiences and on-demand emotional, practical, and evidence-based content that is meaningful to those newly diagnosed, in treatment, post-treatment, and living with metastatic disease. Having done this for over 30 years and having a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a great one to support. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, I hate your face, I don't want a cameo from you, still consider looking at this charity anyway. Whether you donate, volunteer, or just spread the word, you can do a lot in helping this wonderful organization out. So click on the link and give it a look. Thanks so much.